Welcome to Onward Lebanon. I'm Isaac Seavers, Superintendent of Lebanon City Schools. I'm excited to join you every month to talk about our district, our people, our programs, um, our community. One of the things we've decided to do this year is really take a focused look at um, how are we leading schools in the digital age? What does it look like in terms of our policies, the programming that we offer, the resources that we offer to students and families? I would encourage you to go back and look at some of the things we've done so far this year as we've looked at our, our cell phone implementation, um, and the change in policy that happened over the summer. Uh, we talk about the mental health impacts of, of students and, and social media and cell phone time. We talk about the resources that we're offering uh, inside of our district walls to support kids as they work through this time. We've also had some discussions with parents uh, where we've discussed what does it look like to parent teenagers um, in, this, in this digital era. I'm excited today because this discussion is going to invite in uh, two great teachers from Barry Intermediate Schools, Lindsay and TJ Collins. Welcome to the show today. Hi. Hi thank uh, you. I'm so excited to have you guys here. I've been hearing a lot about you for the last two years. Uh, obviously, you know my son, Owen, um, and uh, he loved having you in class. So I feel like I know you a lot. Right? <laughs> I'm excited to get to talk to you today uh, just about this role. And, and, and typically on the show, we, we like to talk about what we're doing inside of our school buildings, right? What is it, the programs that we have? Um, what are we doing to help support kids and things there? Um, what we're trying to do this year is have discussions, yes, about school, but also are there things that we can have in terms of discussions about what's happening outside of school, right? Resources for parents, um, more information and insight into what's going on in students' lives. Not that we have all the answers, right? right? Um, I don't want you guys to feel like you know we're putting parents uh, or parents feel bad uh, in terms of what we're talking about here, but just the the idea of as we learn things as educators, right? How does that change who we are as people? How does it change who we are as educators? Um, and so really just a discussion today about um, the journey that you're on as a couple, um, as parents, as educators, and, and I think really tying into this, this look we've had this year as a district around um, cell phones, around social media, uh, yeah. screen time for kids. So um, I'm going to start by a discussion the three of us had briefly in the hallway at the DPC. So opening day, we roll out to staff, no more cell phones into junior high and high school. We talked a little bit about the research of um, the impact uh, of cell phone and screen time on kids. And the two of you came up to me in the hallway, we were like, I would love to have this conversation with you. We read a book. We went down this rabbit hole, right, of... Uh, and I think the book was um, Glow Kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and so really just the excitement I saw in you that day of like, we're passionate about this. Yeah. Um, as, as teachers, we're passionate about this as parents and as human beings. So tell me a little bit about uh, either one of you, right? Let's start the conversation. What was Glow Kids? Why did you read it? And what, what was the takeaway from you that said like, I want to I wanna dig into this more? I mean, I, I can say even way back before we had our own children, um, like right before our first daughter, we had made a pact with each other that we were like, anytime we went out to eat or we were sitting down at dinner as a family, we would never ever have our cell phones out and we would mm. never ever give our cell phones to one of our kids for entertainment. So that was even before I even went down a rabbit hole right. and read Glow Kids. So we made that pact and that you know vow to each other and we have followed it to a T to this day. And it was two summers ago Ironically, I, I follow someone on social media, another teacher. <laughs> and you found us on social media. I know, right? it's Lindsay. really ironic. <laughs> but she said, a book you have to read is Glow Kids. So I read it two years ago, and it was right after school went out. And I remember sitting out in our backyard while our kids are playing, and I'm reading this book. And he, he read it through me because I kind of read the whole book to him. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, look at this. Listen to this. And it was really all about the dangers of social media, cell phone, brain stimulation. And it talked through a lot of big words in it about brain development, um, addiction and how it works and what social media or video games are like constantly. And you can probably right. fill in the blanks a little bit with like, I mean, just like the dopamine release yeah. that you get from the way you might design something and it, it's to get people hooked. And I mean, we would talk about people we knew in our own life of maybe who we could like see kind of aspects of it here or there or like even times in our own life. If, if we had noticed being on something too long or you look at your screen report at the end of the week and it's way more than you think and, and just kind of how it compounds and, and grows over time. And then when we started 
like a family and then you have children, it's something that you start thinking about even more. And, and Glow Kids talked about like, I mean, it's, it's social and emotional health and, and being, coming like addicted to technology almost. Right. Yeah. And it, it's like a snowball effect, you know, you're, you're, you really want to do something, you have to do something because it's constantly feeding your brain that feeling of enjoyment or pleasure. And so we keep doing it, but then, you know, you have your lack of sleep and then you have a poor diet and it just kind of snowballs to affect the bigger picture yeah. and then it affects your relationship. So it talks all about um, children and their brain development. And in Glow Kids, it says you should never let a child have a screen until they're 12 years old. And I mean, I'm not perfect. We're not no, perfect we're not. parents and we have <clears throat> tablets for our own children. So, and that was before we read this book. And before then it I went read down the rabbit hole. I was like, oh my gosh, what have I <laughs> what done? You're so, like, I've got that Kindle. They've been yep. playing yeah. on their right. own Kindle fire, right. you know, all those right. things. Yeah. Which, right. We think we're doing things for the right reason. I remember like, um, and I remember thinking as when my children were your age, and I'll be honest with you, like, I'm kind of jealous, right? To go back and be at your guys' age with children. How old are your kids, by the way? We my, have six, Charlie, five, six. and three. Yep, five, six, and five, three. and three. Yeah. Um, and so I think about that period of time in our life, right? Now we're at 12, 14, and 16. Um, and if I, you know, we were watching PBS Kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were like, we were controlling as what we could control. Right. But we were also like, hey, I want my kid to read. And so I give them an Amazon you know, Kindle pad or whatever it was, right, or fire pad. And, and I think about that and I'm like, they're, they had books at their reading level. They had right. the ability to do things. And I, it, it seemed educational. Right. But it was hooking them. It right. was. It right? totally was. And that's how it, it, it started for us too. We got them because we talked about it and there are the educational apps and everything that's on there. Yeah. But like you said, they get hooked and then we can see their their stress levels rise when maybe we tell them like that's enough for the day or if we're taking a break from them altogether like the emotional response that you get i mean the more that they're on it the stronger that response is yeah. and it eliminates conversation it eliminates mm -hmm. human interaction and so even with our young kids they're they're learning so many social skills right now so we feel like we are ahead of the game in controlling how much they're on a screen and how and giving them more opportunities to interact in more, you know, face-to-face -face peer interaction. Yeah. So, um, you know, you started, and I'm using your words here, right? You started down a rabbit hole. I went back and made sure that I didn't make that up. No. You wrote that <laughs> to me in an email, I, right? Yeah. Um, you went down this rabbit hole, right? Like, um, so Glow Kids was sort of the entry point for you, right? And, and you started thinking about, you know, just your eyes get open to this, right? Right. It's an awareness thing at this point in time. What changed, if anything? I'm, I'm assuming your kids still have tablets, right? Like, yeah. Right. What changed? What concerned you about maybe what you saw in your own kids or what you saw in, in other kids that sort of said, I need to know more about this? Yeah. I mean, I think like one perfect example is they had their tablets. Then we came home from work one day and my mom was babysitting and they happened to all three be on them. And when I walked into the living room, I was like, hey, guys, I'm home. Like, no response at all. They were just locked in. And I was like, and that's mine, that's mine, that's yeah. mine. So it yeah. was one of those when the tablet becomes more important than mommy or daddy. Like, we knew there yeah. was a problem. Yeah. And so that was the biggest change for me where I realized it wasn't really even their fault. It was my fault, honestly, for setting them up for failure. So we haven't taken them away completely, but we definitely, um, in the summer, mm -hmm. They're, 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 yeah, they're out of sight, out of mind, and they don't even ask for them. Um, they, they don't have that attachment they with don't. them. So, um, but then there's a 30 minute limit in, in this maybe three days a week, if that. So really a total of like an hour and a half per week. So I don't really, after reading Glow Kids, it will scare you to death. To be honest, it was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot yeah. believe this. And it talks about video games with boys and social media more with girls. But it does have a whole chapter in there about education and um, using screens and education and kind of like the, the business side of it. And really it's just like about money. And so we have to like find that balance there. So I feel like as parents with that information, I can just control and teach them awareness of some separation and teach them how to find a very healthy balance between it's okay to do a little of it, but we got to do a lot of this other stuff too. Right. And so that was the biggest takeaway I read from the book because I'm not perfect. I mean, we're not perfect, nope. but the book 
helped me find a balance and understand the dangers and how I can control it. Yeah. We talked, I talked about this a little bit on opening day and it's one of those things, you know, Instagram has not come back to my phone. Um, right. It's you not, deleted your, too. Like, got rid of you yeah. got rid of it, huh? Yeah. Um, Instagram has not come back to my phone. Um, you know, I've replaced it with other things probably at some point in time. Um, but I, I think about like, I'm more aware, but it's really still hard to change. Oh yeah. Right. Um, and that's awareness. So like what drives us to make the change, I think is the, is the big part of this. And so like, you know, for me, it was a, it was a ceremonial step of like, I'm deleting my Instagram account. <laughs> yeah. This is going to make me better. But the reality is like, I, I walk into a room, same thing. My kids are 12, 14 and 16. My wife is, it's a long day. We've gone through six hours of practices combined or whatever it is. And we're all on our phones instead of interacting in a room right. together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, my kids are like, but my screen time is down, right? Like, because we've had this discussion about screen time. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so, but my screen time is down. So I'm only using this two hours a day, Dad, right? Yeah. But the, the difference is, like what you said, like, how do we have the face-to-face -face interaction? Right. Yeah. And right? when do we have the time for that? Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't want my kid to choose... But this is my time for my screen time over. This is my time for my family, too. I mean, there's yeah. not a whole lot of hours in the day, honestly. Right. Yeah. So one of the things I thought was interesting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it here for a second before we get into um, the next topic on the list. But, um, you know, I, I watched the other day, as you start having the conversation, right, people start sending me uh, news articles. People start sending me videos. Um, and... Uh, Prince Harry was talking to the author of The Anxious Generation in a sit-down interview um, and talking about something. So, you know, this is coming um, through an interview and spoken not from the book. But one of the things I thought was interesting that um, the author said was that Meta, TikTok, and Snap are controlling our kids' lives um, because of the algorithms, because of the new, you know, the scrolling. They're getting a curated look at life mm -hmm. right um we talked about it last night in my own house my mother-in-law was in town um they were talking about the new nordstrom rack that opened up in mason and my wife and mother-in-law were like what are we going to do tomorrow should we go shopping for a little bit oh mom there's a new nordstrom rack within two minutes facebook feed nordstrom rack ad right and just by conversation right through conversation <clears throat> so right scary. so scary <laughs> right so scary curated advertisements, feeds, whatever the case may be. And I think you think about that. I, I, I've begun to think about that more, right? Like um, it's not just about the education. Mm -hmm. They're selling a product, right? That's how they make their money. And and we have to be aware of that as parents. Yeah, right? and right. I've also heard that we are the product. I mean, Absolutely. in some way, mm -hmm. I mean, us as humans, we are the product. And right. yeah. There is a Netflix show, Social Dilemma, is yeah. that what it's called? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it does talk a little bit about that, too, of how you just talk about something and the ads pop up. Yep. Yep. And it is designed to keep us constantly hooked and interested. And always going back to your phone. And, yeah. and the notification notification comes, so you're always checking your phone. And it just it's, it kind of hardwires it yeah, into you. Cycle. That, yeah. yeah, so I think the, the other part of that is like the, the idea that we have lost this sort of um, play-based childhood for kids. Right. Yeah. Um, that we have replaced it with devices. Mm. Right. Um, instead of a physical book to read, we give them, uh, you know, the the ebook, the the tablet, whatever it is, with the idea they're going to read a book on it. Right. But there's more to it than that. And so, um, you know, again, I think just thinking through with awareness um, comes a decision, and we'll and we'll talk a little about that as we as we go through this. But. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, next section here because I think uh, you guys have read the book, The Anxious Generation, correct? Yeah. Um, I'm on the beginning of the book. It's a big one, it's by the way. One. It's a big one. There's a lot book. of information. It's a, it's a lot of information. Um, it's a big, heavy book. Uh, and I, I hate to admit this. I don't know if I've told the two of you this before, but like, I'm not an avid reader. Um, so I tell people this all the time. They wonder how I got into education and administration. Um, I was a math guy. Uh, it, sometimes it's painful for me to like sit down and just like power through a book. Right. Yeah. I've gotten really good at audiobooks and Amazon uh, Audible um, has become my friend. <laughs> but um, you know, we're we're going to be hosting some community discussion groups 
And uh, we, we rolled this idea out at a community fa uh, parent focus group recently. Um, some of the moms that were there, even dads that night, like I saw them the next couple of games, the like, next couple of days at some games, they're like, I went and I got my book. It's coming on Thursday. I'm excited to read this and like I, I'm ready to go, All right? And so I'm like, oh, maybe there's something to this, right? Oh, yeah. That as a community, we can, we can start to maybe have some conversations um, around this. But um, I want to ask the question about like you, in the book, The Anxious Generation, it's talking about children born from like 1999 or later, yeah. right? Um, and the idea that, you know, when I was a kid, I had the, the, the Nokia brick phone in college, right? Yeah. I got the flip phone. I thought it was so cool, <laughs> oh, yeah. the Motorola Razor. Um, and I remember getting my first smartphone. But I also now can look back and think I was teaching at the time mm -hmm. and the kids that got their smartphones, and right? I couldn't imagine an elementary kid having a smartphone right. at that time. A, they were expensive. B, like there was no reason for them to have them. Now everybody's got them. Everybody. Everybody. Right? And so uh, just as you've talked in this rabbit hole journey that you're on, right, as you're thinking about this, what stood out to you about the Anxious Generation book? What's something that I think uh, a, a takeaway from you from that book that you want to talk about? I mean, I think one of the, when you read Glow Kids, it was almost really terrifying. But then when you go and read The Anxious Generation, it was really informative because it compared history. It compared, you know, like the 1960s. And it also compared to other countries as well. And um, and it was, it also gives you a solution at the end. It, it, mm -hmm. it kind of walks you through it. And it gave me a peace of mind of, we had TVs growing up. You know, and I feel like we turned out okay, mm -hmm. and we were on screens too. So right. it gave yeah. me a peace of mind that no one's saying we need to just eliminate screens entirely. Yeah, this is not technology is bad. We should go no, back. No, right. it's just amazing. I mean, the technology advancements are amazing. So um, that was one takeaway of it taught me a good balance. And hmm. I think one thing after, like I, it even talked about. I heard you say play based or playing or play based learning. Learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, there's pictures in the book that shows a playground from like I think the 1960s, and it's like it's, it's that's scary. a little too much. <laughs> that's a little bit too much, right? Get yeah. hurt, right? And then it shows a playground of, um, and I kind of remember. You might remember more than me, but it's one of those spinny things. Oh yeah, that has oh, yeah. like the the you know the those rail. Those things were awesome until so, people's legs started getting broken. Yeah, right? but it talked about how it taught boundaries as far as you might get hurt but you'll be okay so mm -hmm. it gave kids some boundaries of how far can i push it you know where where is my fear limit mm -hmm. um but you have to work together in order to move it and spin it and make it more fun right yeah. so there's so many things that go into one very simple playground equipment right but now we have playgrounds that are just fully walled mm -hmm. and no one can really yep. ever get hurt on the If playground. it's something you can ride on, you're strapped in. Like, I mean, part of it was learning even your limits as a kid, knowing how fast you can climb or how far you're going to climb without, mm -hmm. you know, like hitting hitting the barrier and, and getting scared. But learning those limits is something that's really important as yeah. you're as you're growing up and developing. So one of the things that he says in the book, and it's one of, it's early on in the book, it's like one of the main premises of his research is that we are overprotecting yeah. in the real world right. and underprotecting in the digital world. <clears throat> yes, I remember mm -hmm. reading that to you when yep. I cuz I read it before him. Right. I was like this is such a true statement. Right. I yeah. mean Yeah, so last week I, rem I was down at Donovan for their Fuse Day which uh, kind of anti-bullying and and uh, look at things down there. I spent the, the morning with a group of fourth graders and I had a small group. I was six or eight kids. I'm in my small group and I had to explain to them kind of if you knew me uh, if you were my best friend, you would know, right? And um, because we wanted them to be able to talk to each other about things that people maybe don't realize about them, some to find some common ground. Um, and uh, so I had to think back to when I was a fourth grader, right? And talk as if I was a fourth grader was mm -hmm. the was the job for me. And I, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, if you knew me, you would know that my best friend and I ride our bicycles every day, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so I talked for 30 seconds to a minute, told like a bunch of little things like that. The first question from a fourth grader was, where did you ride your bicycle to? And my answer was, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. We went towns away. Right. Yeah. Right? We did these things. And so I think like, and they're like, whoa. <laughs> they, were like, they were so shocked that yep. my parents let me ride like yeah. out of eye shot of the house and be gone for hours on end in fourth grade or whatever. Um, 
in 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 the flip side of that, right? And I see. I talked to my wife Emily about this. Like, oh, that's real. Like Emily, they're going to be okay, right? Like Owen's twelve. He's fine to ride his bike to the friend's house a couple streets over. Um, and we didn't think we were overprotective parents, right? But like right. that's like the is he going to be okay? Oh yeah, you know right. thing. But his point is, we're handing these kids supercomputers mm-hmm. that connect them to the entire world, world. right? Mm-hmm. Right. They without any control, right? Yeah. Without any control, and I think, um, you know, what I'm excited to kind of get into and look at, and, and part of the discussion is, what are the implications of that then, right? right. What's happened as a result of that? Right. Under protecting in the digital world, um, is is allowing them access to so many things right. that we have no idea. Right. But we're overprotecting them and the ability to make decisions. How high can I climb mm-hmm. on this thing that looks like a death trap right. before <laughs> I realize this is my limit, right? right? Or what what do I do? And I think so finding that balance as parents, I think, is really yeah. important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so I, I'm kind of a little jealous. Uh, like I said a little bit ago, uh, this book was written in 2016. Yeah. Right? 2016, my kids would have been eight, six, and four. I know. Yeah. Right? Before devices. Right. Right before devices for us, um, and so uh, if I knew some information then, I'd like to think that I would have done some things differently. Yeah. Right. Um, you're on the front end of this, right? What does this look like for you as a parent? Kind of knowing where you are today with 